Hi, I'm Jordan. Welcome back to the channel where we make benches all the time. Or at least we made a bench and now we've made another bench. I like benches. This bench is a traditional shaker style bench made out of crappy leftover two by four uh, studs that I had from a basement renovation that I did. And my basement doesn't have a workbench in it. And my garage cannot be used in the winter because it's uninsulated and so cold. And I thought this winter, I'm going to do something with my life and learn how to use uh, uh, one of these. This is called a hand plane. And I don't know how to use it. I can't make a lot of noise down here in my basement for waking up the family. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to work on my hand tools. And I'm gonna figure out how this goes with this. And when I see you next summer, you'll say, that guy's really good with a hand plane. Let me show you the features. The envy of your neighbors, this beautiful bench is made out of three separate parts for easy transport, a top, consisting of laminated pine, a frame, also of pine two by fours, and a cabinet made out of plywood. Basic materials include 25 eight foot two by fours, a couple different thicknesses of plywood for the cabinet, and I went with a Veritas inset vise as my big splurge on this guy. It's actually possible to build this with just a table or circular saw and a lot of clamps, but it doesn't hurt to have the other items listed. Extras include an inset vise and a row of dog holes for standard clamping of any type of boards or other large objects. Eight drawers of varying depths, two open shelves and open on the back for extra room, a cheap scrap bin, I'll call it a vise, for uh, real easy vertical work. I was being a cheapskate and didn't want to pay for a real vice. And you know what? You can still do things like dovetails and other work, theoretically. I'm gonna try it and I'll let you know how that goes. A large paper roll to handle glue ups or allow your kids some art space. And then on that edge, we have a blade to help you easily rip that paper off. This bench, I should mention, is sort of a traditional design that you would often find in your garage for hand tools or just as an assembly table. I don't have the space for it, but I do have a little nook down here in my basement. So this is gonna work out really well for me. I'm really glad I built it. Let me show you how I did it. So I'm not gonna bore you with uh, how I dressed and milled all my two by fours. Basically, I just got them into a non-warped state as best I could, because a lot of them were total crap. The first step is cutting a little groove around the perimeter of the apron. And this is gonna be how we attach the top eventually. This little S-channel doodad um, allows for wood movement when we eventually put the top on. To make the legs, we start by gluing up some blanks made from two two by fours, or if you had a four by four, you could just use that. Now, this is probably one of the most complicated parts of this entire build, and it's honestly not that complicated, but because I ain't the brightest, I just wanna make sure that I keep it all straight, so I pencil it out first. Obviously, there are four of them, Two of them face the same way, two of them are a mirror of that. So let me explain the design and that will make sense. As with most good ideas, this is a simple one. You have the two legs opposite each other, which are connected with two short two by fours. And then you duplicate that whole side and spin it around. And you connect the two sides using two long stretcher pieces and above those uh, two long apron pieces and it's all held together with glue. Once you clamp it, it's really solid. And because I'm putting a cabinet in there, I'm gonna put in two braces, otherwise I wouldn't even bother with that. Simple and it works. Real quick, before I start cutting the legs, I sanded a tiny chamfer on the bottom of each one. That'll just help prevent any splintering in the future. 
So I don't have a dado stack. That would certainly be the best way to do this. You could use a circular saw in a square and hold it tight against it. Uh, I'm just gonna do it with a, with a regular thin kerf blade. And basically on my mark, I'm just gonna go, I'm trying to go exactly halfway up the leg with my depth. And I put on a sacrificial fence onto my miter gauge, and then I'm just gonna go slowly and move it a tiny bit at a time, eating away at all that delicious pine. Once that first side is done, we're gonna flip it and move on to the next cut. And as you can see, there's less to take out here. It's the same height. You gotta really make sure you dial in that height correctly, uh, which is exactly halfway. And now we cut off this portion. And that's what the top should look like for each one of your legs. Then we will work on the lower part, I guess the stretcher you'd call it. Same concept, just chip away at it bit by bit. And now we'll spin it and do the final section. So it's, it's four on each leg. Again, two of them are exactly the same and the other two are mirrored where those go. And there we have it. Lovely. So a finished leg should look like this, like a little jigsaw puzzle. Now we can assemble a side and to do that, we will take two of the opposite legs and we'll do a little test fit here. <clears throat> we'll run our bottom stretcher, the short piece across, make sure that fits snugly. And that top one has that groove in it that we cut earlier, and we're gonna make sure that faces in. That's very important. Okay, it looks good. We got it in position. Apply a liberal amount of glue. And spread her on there. And once we're ready, we'll stick them on in. And then just shoot one brad into it to help tack it in place. We do want to check for square before we finalize it. So this is just helping us get it set up. Same with the top. And now we will check for square all the way around. Real important. And then let's clamp this sucker up. A lot of pressure. Leave it for a few hours. It should look something like that. Come back the next day, pop them off, and give it a little bit of a sanding to even things out before we go too far. And then we're gonna flip it on its side and prepare to glue in the long support stretchers. And I realized I don't have room to do it up there. So I had to move it to my floor to continue the operation. Get them in, give them a quick pin, and then move on to the top portion. Ow. Once again, make sure that you have your groove to attach the top facing in and up, all the way around the top apron. Stand her up. Okay, other side, rinse and repeat. Yeah, look at you, <laughs> making something. Okay, let's put one pin in each just to hold it and check for square again. And now we can clamp it up and let this sucker dry. I'm also going to put two little cross pieces uh, evenly spaced in thirds on the bottom. And the frame is done. Okay, well, we gotta sign it. So we uh, heat this guy up, hold her on, let it smoke, and now the frame is done. Oh yeah! Okay, let's put a little poly on it ahead of time, which will just make it easier before we put the top on and the cabinet. Might as well, right? Uh, I think I wound up putting three coats on the bottom. And while we're putting this on, let's hear from this week's sponsor. In-laws. Yes, in-laws. Nobody likes a bragger, but I'm just stating facts here when I tell you this couple can do it all. Painting, tiling, decking, drywalling, dancing, sewing, electrical, lawn care, plumbing, cooking, grandparenting, and most importantly, helping. From tool knowledge to helping hanging drywall to teaching me how to put in flooring, 
the list is endless. Investing in good tools is nice, but if you have the means, I suggest investing in a great pair of in-laws as well. In-laws, get yours today. The top. Why do I keep bringing up that it is made out of crappy pine two by fours? I think just to illustrate the point that you can have a super solid, stable surface without spending much money. All this is, is literally two by fours and glue. So I cut off all the sides, and these are a few of the things that I'm getting ready to do a bit of a stressful glue up, not gonna lie. Um, a few calls to help keep it in line. Uh, you could also use something like, well, look at how warped that one is. Um, yeah, these are all gonna go through the planer afterwards. Uh, yeah, these, these, these need some work. These took more work than if I would have went out and specifically got some nice boards, but I wanted to challenge myself and see if I could mill these into a usable form. And they're already much better than they were right there. And you'll see it requires some more work. So anyway, get everything ready on a glue up like this because it, yeah, it's a little stressful. And I rolled it all out, spread it all on, and then squash those suckers together. Here you can see I'm adding the calls and uh, all they are is just some straight boards with a little bit of uh, wax paper on them to keep the glue from sticking. I probably should have thought this out a little better beforehand. I kind of just whipped them out and uh, without a second person to balance the other side, it just took a little bit of, a little bit of doing, but you know, it's fine. You can see it they keep slipping off there. <laughs> it's funny. But look, you can also see how they pull it into position once I have it right. So I did this in three sections of six to make it manageable and because that would fit through my planer, which has a max width of 13 inches. So once the glue is dry on the three sections, I pop off the clamps and then run them through this guy right here. I should emphasize you do not need to own a planer to do this, but you will need to plane it using a hand plane if you don't. Now that I have them planed to a final thickness, I'm going to arrange the sections in the way that I think looks best, and then I'm going to cut off the excess. And as you can see, there's quite a bit, it's from both ends. So uh, the reason for that, waiting until now, is because that takes care of any snipe that your planer may create on the ends. Mine's terrible about it. Um, so now I've trimmed it down to the actual length I want. And for the final glue up, uh, because I have them in the arrangement I like, I am marking with a red crayon the orientation that I want the sections. Also, I'm going through and marking where I'm gonna put biscuits using a biscuit joiner, which is not necessary, but it's just a nice option. Uh, instead of making really big calls to keep these all level, using these or dominoes or dowels or something like that will just keep these sections from slipping vertically during the glue up because I didn't have any big enough calls and was too lazy to make some. This is the big, big, big glue up. So once again, I just wanna make sure that I have everything straight. And if it looks like there's a terrible gap there, on that left side one, yeah, it might be, but that's the bottom. Uh, again, these are these are these are real warped. I fix it all. You'll see. Relax. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Get the glue in the slots for the biscuits. Line it up. Try to get them set as best I can and quickly get the other one on there, and then I'm gonna use the clamps to really bring them all together. Viewers, if you're just joining us, we are back on day 43 of the 455th annual Clamp Champ Tournament. We're watching young Jordan Frank from Chicago. He has tightened the first clamp on top, and as you can see, it's pulling together, I think. Yes? Yeah. Yes, he's done it. My God, he's done it. Look at that. The man from Chicago has pulled it off at the last moment. He is now applying every clamp he owns. Jolly good show. <coughs> Pop the clamps off the next day, and let's see what it looks like. Real solid. And now we got a lot of voids, knots, and a few uh, gaps to address. 
This is the first time we're really looking at how beat up this pine actually is. First things first, we're gonna take a small chisel and clean out all of these areas, getting anything loose in there out of the way. Then we're gonna fill it with some good old epoxy. I'm using a two to one total boat. Stir it up and then carefully pour it in. Nothing super deep, so these are all a one pour. None of these holes go through to the other side, so there wasn't any need to tape, but I did this to both sides. Anyway, filled all voids. And then uh, when it was all dry, come back with a belt sander and just go over the entire surface to clean it up. I also am doing the edges to get those nice and even, and then uh, proceed for the next chunk of my life to sand with my random orbit sander. Uh, started with probably an 80, worked my way up to a 220. And I'm gonna coat the entire thing with a water-based poly. Um, there are a lot of different choices for coating a workbench top. The, one of the things about a poly is that I'm gonna use this as kind of a multi-use table, um, doing glue-ups on it, doing paint on it, etc., etc. And the poly just makes it really easy to clean off and wipe down and will look real shiny under bright light. And that's it. Bench top is done. Yeah, looking good. Yeah. All right, this is a good stopping point. I feel like I've been editing this for... Holy criminy. Stay right there. Oh, man. Oof. Editing is really uh, takes a long time. Uh, it's kind of like sanding, like it's just repetitive and boring, but necessary. No, but it's hard. It's like, it's like doing dovetails, except I've never actually done a dovetail. Mental note. Grow channel so someone else can edit. Done. Um, at this point, you could completely stop because we have a very sturdy workbench in and of itself, perfect for an outfeed table, perfect for whatever general use you need. It is a great bench, and if you did like me, probably didn't cost you very much. Now, if you're ready to take it to the next level and get even more use out of your bench, uh, watch the following video because we're gonna add a cabinet that'll slide right in and that'll give us two shelves and eight drawers. And we'll also go over a few other things like how to install uh, an inset vise, uh, paper roll, stuff to make it even more useful for you and me. It's a great bench. Uh, it works well in your driveway, your garage, your basement, your bathroom, your quinceanera, wherever you need one, you can make it and adapt the plans to whatever size you really want. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of this. As always, I appreciate it so much. If you like the music, check out my band Quasar What What. We are all shaving. And until next time, take care of yourself and I'll see you then. Thank you so much.